going on guys, Victor here. Today is opening day of lobster season. The last lobster video you guys saw was mini season. The regular season goes from August 6th to March 31st. The boys just jumped in, so we are on the hunt for Florida spiny lobster. We're gonna catch them, we're gonna clean them, and we're gonna cook them, and I got big plans for these critters today. We're gonna make a really delicious lobster stock and then a lobster risotto, so I'll catch you guys underwater. Let's go catch them. my first lobster of the day. Netted it, fish are tickled it out for me. Textbook perfect. That's why these nets work so good, is because you can get in tight corners. A lot of times we're lobstering in really rocky areas and those big bulky nets just don't work. So fish are tickles them out in the open. Wham, we got them. We're gonna show you how to measure a lobster. So you get a measuring device, they have to be greater than three inches, so the distance between these two points on here is three inches. So you're gonna put it between the horns of the lobster, which is right here between his eyes. And then you're gonna go to the back of the head, which is the carapace right here. So, just like that. That is a legal lobster because it doesn't go past the head. This one took me around town. So what we're doing is we're going and trying to find lobster in any type of structure they can hide in. Lobster like to hide during the day from predators. At night, they scour the ocean floor, they hunt, and they scavenge. You got yourself a tickle stick. This is used to get the lobster out of the structure, and then a net. Both this lobster net and tickle stick are actually custom made by Brooke and I. I'm gonna have those linked below for you guys at floridalobsternets.com. Go catch some bugs. Thank you. 
So we're not doing too bad. It's definitely a little bit on the slow side, but check this out. We got some pretty nice bugs. And these are just gnarly looking animals. You guys see, they kind of look like underwater spiders. And the reason they get the name Spiny Lobster is because you guys see they got horns on them, their legs, their antennas, their body is just covered in spines. There's nothing inviting about this animal. It's just super sharp. Um, that's why you guys see us wear gloves because these are not easy animals to deal with with your bare hands. So you see how this lobster is using his tail to smack me like that? That's what they do, they propel. They're backwards swimmers. So you guys see a lot of times we'll chase the lobster, like we'll get him out of a rock. And Bricky had a really nice catch where it might have been this lobster right here. It just shot like 40 feet and we chase them. And the main thing we want to do is getting, get them out into the open over sand. We want to get them away from the structure. That's the whole purpose of the tickle stick. That way we can net them. And they just use this big fan-like tail to just glide through the water. One thing that lobster do that's pretty unique is these animals, their shell doesn't grow. They basically grow a new shell every couple of weeks or every couple of months. So if you guys look at this lobster, so since I can squish the shell like this, this lobster just got done molting and now it's hardening, which means he deposited his old shell. Whereas this lobster right here, I mean, it's, it's rock hard. He's already done hardening. Whereas this one, if you listen, it's, it's not nearly the same. This one's a lot squishier. And this is when they're most vulnerable. They didn't get our limit, but got really close and just a great dive. Saw a ton of lobster, a huge eagle ray, which I've never dove with before. I've seen a ton of them from the pier and from the boat, but to actually swim with one was really neat. And today's video is actually sponsored by Undoes It. And they make really good cleaning products for boats, RVs, and other applications. We use it on our boat. 99% of this boat is covered with canvas, except for the non-skid around this bow rail right here. This non-skid is always getting beat up because it's never covered. There's just this growth that grows on here and you get all these crazy black spots. Non-skid deck cleaner. You wet the area and then you just apply a small amount. So I've been letting it sit for about a minute now. Now we're gonna scrub. I haven't even squirted it off, but you guys see, look at that area, right? Look at this area. Now we're gonna do a little squirt, a little rinse. I mean, it speaks for itself. So we used to use stuff like soft scrub or bleach, which is number one, it's not good for the canal, it's not good for fish, it's not good for your boat, it's horrible for your boat. It's just slowly gonna eat at your gel coat and your wax. This stuff is biodegradable, phosphate free, chlorine free, ammonia free, hydrocarbon free. If you guys wanna try this out, non-skid deck cleaner by undoes it i'm gonna have it linked below for you guys there's also gonna be a link on the screen here so go ahead check them out linked below as well as on the screen here now let's go clean up some lobster so this is what you normally think of when you think of florida lobster you think of the tail right this is the main muscle that people harvest. We don't get huge, huge lobster like they do up north or in the Bahamas. In the Bahamas, it's really common to get four, five, six pound lobster. And when you get lobster like that, the legs are full of meat, the, the knuckles are full of meat, and even the head. There's not that much stuff in there. I know a lot of you guys hate to see it go to waste, but today we're actually gonna do something with it. We're gonna make a stock out of it. So what I like to do when you make a stock, we're gonna take our tail off just like you would. You break off the antenna. These lobster have backwards facing spines. You go up the lobster's butt, essentially. Go up there about halfway, do a little spin, and then start to pull. And what you're gonna do is, you're gonna pull out that lobster's intestinal tract. So that's that digestive tract that you would not want on your lobster tail. To make our lobster stock, I'm gonna separate the top half of the head from the bottom portion where the legs are. Okay. Those are the lobster's gills. Well, that's what they used to breathe with. And this is the head meat. So yes, there is meat in the head of the lobster, but you guys see it is not that much. And I want a nice, clear lobster stock. So I'm gonna go ahead and rinse out all his guts. When that water starts to run clear, there's nothing but uh, some meat in there left. I'm gonna do the same thing with the portion with the legs and gills. 
Just like you would make a chicken stock or a beef stock, think of this as the bone of the animal, right? So we're gonna use the lobster carcass to flavor the stock, not only to make lobster stock, but to make our risotto. So I'll catch you guys in the kitchen. So this is what our lobster stock looks like after about an hour of simmering, but a little backtracking, what I did was I sauteed carrot, onion, and celery for about 20 minutes until it was nice and caramelized. Then I added uh, the lobster, deglazed with a good amount of white wine, probably half a bottle of white wine. And then I added a bunch of peppercorns, bay leaves, salt, um, four garlic cloves. And the cool thing about stock is you can go a bunch of different routes. If you wanted to do more like a tomato based, you could do like a cherry tomato. You could add whole tomatoes, you could add tomato paste, but I wanted a, a clear, like a, a gold clear stock. So at this point, our, I don't think we're gonna extract any more flavor. So what I'm gonna do is remove these shells, discard them. Then I'm gonna do something I have not done before with the stock, and that's use the immersion blender to really blend everything in there, but we're still gonna run it through a sieve and cheesecloth because I just want clear liquid, but I really wanna infuse the flavors, and I think by blending everything together, it's just gonna give it that much better of a flavor profile. So this is parsley basil herb oil. Super easy to make. You take parsley, you take basil, you blanch it real quick, shock it in ice water, blend it with a neutral oil like canola oil, reheat it back through, chill it, and then I let mine sit overnight to really get the flavor in the oil. And then um, after it's been in the fridge for 24 hours, I have it going through a cheesecloth so you guys will see. All we're gonna get left with is this super silky, just delicious flavored oil. You're not gonna get any of the little bits of parsley or basil. Killer for garnishes and also killer for um, just flavoring anything or incorporating it into a sauce. You guys see that real slow drip there. It's gonna be definitely incorporated into tonight's dinner. Tonight we're gonna be doing a lobster risotto. So the key to a good risotto is you need to have a stock pot of your liquid that you're gonna be cooking your rice in. I'm gonna be doing arborio rice. This is the lobster stock that I made yesterday. So delicious, it's definitely the most flavorful one I've ever done, and I really attribute it to the fact that not only did it sit overnight, I think I think when things sit overnight, and I, I probably use like 24 bodies of the lobster. The more lobster, the better. So there's our lobster stock, I got about six cups. Now I'm gonna be doing a fennel uh, lobster stock risotto. And we're gonna finish it off with a little bit of creme fraiche or mascarpone. Fennel's got like a, kind of like a celery-like taste. I would say it's more fresh. It's got a, a little bit of a licorice taste, but once you cook it, it kind of loses that licorice-ness, that licorice aroma. So we're gonna start off with this. We're just gonna saute that. Fennel has been sauteing, going in with the arborio rice. And we're gonna toast this up to give it some color, give it a nutty flavor. So our rice has been toasting. Our rice has been toasting for about five minutes. Now, here is where you need your hot stock next to you at all times. We're gonna just cook this. It'll probably take like 30, 40 minutes. I'm just gonna add ladlefuls at a time until we get a nice, creamy consistency. This is not a dry rice dish. In this pan, we got some lobster sauteing. We're gonna add some creme fraiche to our risotto. It's gonna give it a nice silky texture. Oh yeah. As well as some Parmesan. So I wanted to give them a little bit of a color, so I did medium, high, high heat on one side. Now we'll turn it down. So here we're gonna do some sea scallops to go along with our lobster risotto. Season side down, salt and pepper. Scallops speak for themselves, they don't need anything. They're a perfect animal. 
So that's what you want right there, that nice brown sear. Oh yeah. The herb oil we made earlier. Isn't it? You start out painting as a kid and finishing as an adult. So this is our basil parsley oil. Corn puree from earlier. Okay, there's our lobster risotto with the lobster folded in. You got the Parmigiano Reggiano in there, the uh, creme fraiche, fennel, just look at that. We can put our scallops right on top of our risotto, just like that. One can be like this. This one can be like this. Okay, we're gonna finish our risotto with a little fennel frond. So these are microgreens we're gonna garnish with. It's uh, kale, arugula, basil, parsley, microgreens. No end of the video food review. Sometimes it's nice to not have to shove a camera in people's faces. You guys see us do it all the time. But tonight was just all about enjoying with the family. Love the lobster stock. It's got so many different applications. You can really taste the ocean and that rich seafood flavor. I'm gonna save it for future recipes. And it's something that you could certainly freeze. So I highly recommend it if you guys have never tried it. Once again, thank you so much for watching. And big shout out to Undoes It for sponsoring today's video. In other news, next week, Brooke and I are going to be getting on a flight to Seward, Alaska. So look out for those videos August 17th through 23rd. I'll catch you guys in the next one.